Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I plan to try to land on the moon with my little lunar lander, very little lunar lander, and that is ready to go on the launch pad. I have fixed the landing contract category and so now those landing contracts pop up. Basically the problem was that they had stated that the only science that could fulfill them was the probe report but I don't have the probe report as a thing in RP2000 right now. So now any science will do, and so they're showing up. And of course, we picked up the, the lunar landing contract last time, but now we've got all of them showing up. So that is all well, and we are going to try to launch. Well, it's a better looking rocket than previously we've had, so that's good. We will once again try to line up with the moon, bring out the rendezvous info. Not that I've got that configured quite right. Uh, you know, we could probably fix that during launch, but let's not waste Delta V. We'll, we, we seem to be topping all the propellant off just fine. We'll wait today. We now have commsats around the moon helping us. That's always nice. But it does occur to me that we want to make sure that the side of the moon with light is the one facing Earth. So, we are going to wait much, much longer, actually. That, that'll be good enough. We can land here. Okay, so, focusing back over here, we've left our rocket on the launch pad for quite a while. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Ooh, I've got a sound problem. That's because I opened something else up. Sorry about that. We now have no sound. <laughs> I, I can fix that, but not right now. That is because I opened Sony Vegas to edit video. A different video. And when you open Sony Vegas up after you open up some other program that has sound, it decides to dominate. Very yellow clouds to go with our red rocket, <laughs> reddish rocket. Okay, our two engines have done their thing just fine, and we are getting to the high g-force portion of it. And separation and ignition. We have three ether engines, fairing sep. And it looks like a really fat candy cane kind of thing now. Um, still accumulating data units, 1600 so far. Mean time before failure, what was that, 13 minutes or so? Uh, sorry, no, that's uh, 855 minutes it says. I don't believe that for a second. Anyway, uh, we've had so many failures with these little things. Okay, making orbit, and shut down 316 by 200 we've got it into, and the engines work for that burn. Uh, well, I think around here-ish over Africa we can transfer. I think we'll have comms there. Okay, why do we lose the encounter like that? Hmm. Well, we can just delay. I wanted to get there earlier, but it's going to be like that. Oh, it's still not showing it as we get closer. Yeah, just the orbit line just disappears when we get close to the moon. <laughs> this is just Kerbal being antisocial here. And ignition. Oh, I I wanted sound. Shoot, I should have just restarted the game. Okay, well, anyway, it's space. There's not supposed to be sound, so there. Now, will you be honest and show me our approach as it gets closer? No, it still disappears. Uh, is it really missing the moon? I don't think it could be. Okay, I'm gonna restart so we have sounds, and then we're gonna come back to this, 
and we are going to see. We've got some fuel in this stage still and ign ignitions, so we'll use it. And we will see if we need to make a correction as we get into Lunar SOI. I still think we're going to get into Lunar SOI. I don't see how we could possibly miss the moon like this. But now we've got an encounter. Um, I wonder if we can fix that at all. Uh, we're not really oriented very well. I don't want to turn away from the sun, so we'll just wait. We're going to crash this stage into the moon so that it gets disposed of. Okay, so that's a crash course for it. Separation. And getting the engine ready. Testing engine. Okay. Uh, well, we need to go in the opposite direction, but I want to sidestep a bit. Um, I think we've already sidestepped. Wow. Vigorously. Very vigorously. <laughs> uh, these RCS are too powerful for this. Maybe I should have gone with the little nitrogen ones. We've already used too much hydrazine. Um, we better not use smart ASS. And find controls if we can. Getting it ready for landing. What are the chances I tip this over? Hmm. Okay, that's good enough for an approach. Let's see, are we approaching in such a way that we can just try to land directly? We could, we could just sort of go into it. Uh, we don't have much hydrazine right now, because the thrusters are more powerful than I needed them to be. Yeah, like that. <laughs> well, at least it'll guarantee that we're going to have comms. Okay. I will want... I haven't even configured these windows yet. Landing info. I want better landing info. So, it's finally time to use the custom window editor. I don't want to use the hydrazine in order to stop our rotation, so we're just going to keep rotating until we get there. We have a 12 and a half minute burn time, but we don't need to use all of it in order to land. But I'm not going to blindly trust that suicide burn countdown, though on this kind of trajectory, because we're mostly straight in, it's probably not too bad. Um, okay, I, I take it back. I'll just uh, just do that myself. Thank you. All right, burning. Uh, let's just use kill rotation. Maybe it'll be a little bit better than SAS. Hydrazine does not look great. And deliberately not trying to turn it to the retro marker because I don't want to waste the hydrazine. We'll do one turn to it when it's finally at the top and then that'll allow us to come straight down in theory. Okay, that's probably good enough. Right, so no kill rotation for a bit here. We are over the lowlands. I initially reduced the utilization on this tank to accommodate the engine, but then increased it back. I mean, of course it would be trivial to increase the physical size of the tank, considering how small this all is. I guess we must have failed the, the contract, the impactor contract. Or, did we fulfill it with the spent stage? I don't know. Wait. Lunar flyby, lunar orbit. Lunar impactor. Our spent stage did the lunar impactor contract for us. Congratulations on hitting the moon. Well, okay, well we better make this survive then. <laughs> now the pressure is on. No, I kill that surface horizontal. Okay, turn to actual straight up and down. If we can. Oh, we don't have much. Okay, go. Now uh, we're increasing our surface horizontal now because of that. I can't turn it. Uh oh. We're going to need to pack more hydrazine next time. Uh,
Oh, we've got a lot of surface horizontal speed, and you know what that means. <laughs> well, we can't. It's all. Eek. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I was not expecting this. Guys? <laughs> I think the moon helped us, sort of. Uh. Are we landed? Situation landed. All right, whatever you say. Gravity scan, transmit. Ooh, look at that power go. That's the only thing we can do? Uh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Okay, uh, maybe if I retract the landing gear. Maybe it's a tweak scaled landing gear. What do you think? Okay, well, it's satisfied with that, but I sort of wanted to do the barometer and thermometer, too. I guess I accidentally didn't action group those. Yeah, transmit. <laughs> uh, did we have a barometer? That's the accelerometer. And maybe I didn't have the barometer on here. Well, that was peculiar. The contract fulfilled. Yep. All done. <laughs> uh, what happens if I extend now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a tweak scaled uh, landing gear. Whoa. So, yeah, that's a use at your own risk kind of thing with the tweak scaled landing gear. I don't know. We should take a look at it in the VAB to see you know, does it have negative mass or something? You know, something like that. So, but it might be under the mass limit for a rigid body thing in Kerbal. It might just be too small. Anyway, apparently this doesn't count as in motion, so it's not stopping you from going to the Space Center. So, Space Center. Should we have succeeded there? I don't know. Probably would have just taken a tumble. It was slow enough. It just would have fallen over. The solar panels probably should have broken off. Uh, they're not separate pieces from the CubeSat, right? It's just one piece. So... I guess they can't just break off like that. I don't know. Let's verify both. 35 kilograms, 35 kilograms here. Um, these... It doesn't tell me the mass. Take it off. Uh, they're each... Uh, 0 0.5 kilograms, but that is lower. I think the bottom limit is 3 kilograms, actually. So, maybe that was a problem. Anyway, let's see what our contract situation is now. We've got another Lunar Impactor contract. They really like these. We've got another successful re-entry contract, but we've sort of done those things. Venus flyby, Mars flyby, I feel like might actually be beyond us, but science data from the surface of the moon isn't, or space from the moon, or space around Earth. Maybe we should just pick those up on principle. We have the capacity. Okay. First crewed orbital, though. Well, we need a crew vehicle. And we don't have... We can get the Mark 1 pot, <laughs> which is really cheap. That's a very desperation play, but... Well, we got the science. It's about time. Okay, giving it some thought, I think that I'm gonna try something ambitious, because I don't want to do the same thing over again, and we've already placed a satellite. So what we're gonna try to do is launch three satellites. And I think we're going to go with the polar satellite around Earth and then 
it says it will drop off a CubeSat into that polar orbit, and then from that polar orbit, transfer to the moon. We'll have to time it right. It is only one good time every month to go from a particular polar orbit around the Earth to a polar orbit, or to any orbit around the moon, to get to the moon. So, a, partic a particular time of the month, we'll have to transfer over, and then we'll plop off the second CubeSat, and then we will have to reorient, but these orbits are really, really high, so it probably won't cost too much to tilt our orbit around the moon using the transfer stage and reorient this orbit and plop that satellite off around the moon, and that'll get us a lot of money. And we've got plenty of time to do it, not that we need that kind of time. So we're gonna try three satellites and also get science data from space around Earth, Moon, but not the surface of the Moon, because we're just doing satellites here. And these will be cube comsats. And so we're avoiding the equatorial orbit of Earth because, first of all, launching from Cape Canaveral, we're going to have to do some inclination corrections like that. So we're just gonna skip that one. But I think this is sufficiently ambitious to satisfy me. So we will try that out. Okay, I just found out that we have the solar CubeSat panels after all. I thought I had made them, but yeah, they're here in structural instead of in electrical is the problem. So yes, these exist. Um, yeah, use them. <laughs> Ah, oh, I could have saved so much trouble. We don't even need the bloody CubeSat things. Anyway, we'll have extra solar panelry like this. That'll help. Also, now that I've added tweak scale to the business, we can use the payload adapter with control core. And so now this is a controlled stage without the CubeSat. So we can release the CubeSats and this is still a controllable stage. And it's got its own uh, communications. So that is good. So now I just have to figure out how to mount three CubeSats to this, and we'll be in good business. Uh, and we need to change this to uh, triple cube launch. But the problem is we don't have the radial attachment points. On the bright side, we have modular girder segments. <laughs> we don't even have the little um, octo cubic octagonal strut, but with tweak scale, tweak scale solves all problems. We basically have cubic octagonal struts, so what we're going to do is we're going to have two cubic octagonal struts like this, well, modular girder segments. I hope they're not too low in mass. I really need this to show me the mass, but then I can take this off. Oh, it's negligible mass, let's put it that way. Uh, so we've got two of those, and yeah, we'll kill it. We'll clip it in, and then we're going to. I've already subassembled a CubeSat. Uh, no, I don't want to overwrite it. I want to. No, uh, I want to pick it up, uh, and we can just plop those on. So those have the decouplers already. We do have to make sure that they're not clipping into this control thing sort of like a trident maybe that uh, well the trident is sort of already a booked name but darn it this is more of a trident than the trident I don't particularly like the 23 minute burn time I did add more hydrazine by the way so for the RC we obviously adapted the lunar lander here uh, but I snuck hydrazine in here I think we could do with less delta V and I would prefer to have bonus hydrazine, so let's remove the tanks, add the hydrazine. Let's say 10 units. We had only one on the lander, and of course we technically ran out. And then we'll have the rest as that 20 minute burn time. Actually there's a limit, uh, but, but the rated burn time of this is an hour, so it's okay. Triple cube launch, let's build one. Okay, so here we go. Will our ambitious triple CubeSat launch work? Throttle is up. SAS, oh, throttle is not up. There we go. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch.
Oh, shoot. I needed to launch at the right time. Ah! Uh... <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, okay, um, what should we do? Uh, it's already not working right. Uh, let's let's go to the moon. <laughs> we'll focus on the. We're not even at the right time for the moon. I wonder if we can go to the moon, place the satellites there, and then like come back. Such failure, so quickly. That was a serious case of launch fever, where we didn't even bother to check the launch window. Okay, preparing RCS. Separation and ignition and fairings. I don't think we can do too much more than 5 degree relative inclination right now. Okay, we are getting close to orbit. I think we're a bit lopsided though. Not the biggest problem right now. Okay, shut down. Yeah, 370 by 180 basically. Uh, so, well, our ascending node is not in the best place. We've got 5 degrees. I don't know whether... We can just transfer, or whether we need to uh, wait till we can hit the moon at the node for an off-plane transfer. I think we probably have to wait. And, well, no, apparently not. Now we're trying to get into a pretty high polar orbit anyway, so... Um, that green one. Looks like we're going high in the wrong sort of way. Uh, we're gonna have to make adjustments anyway. We could capture low and then boost up. Let's see how much it takes to capture up here. It doesn't take a whole lot. So I don't think there's any point getting low. Still 500. Uh, I think ultimately that's not too bad a deal. And we'll have to pirouette a bit. That ends up being a thousand. Okay, and that costs 1,161. Are we going to be able to go from that into that other orbit? They're sort of going in opposite directions. <laughs> uh, that complicates matters, doesn't it? We should have maybe given each of the CubeSats independent propulsion instead of having them all on the same bus. Anyway, we can extend their antennae, but we can't do the solar panels because they'll bump into each other. Might as well make sure that they have their antennae out though. Okay, and ignition. Okay, that looks like the path that we were aiming for. So, alright. And then we do this. That's a little bit lopsided now. Timing was off there. I forgot that we wouldn't be able to extend these necessarily. We should have put more on. And I think when they're not extended, they do, do not provide power at all anyway. Let's see, these are getting some, but just not enough. Uh, maybe we can turn just a little bit for that one. Okay, I'm going to risk extending the panels on one of these, knowing that there are colliders on those. But, okay, so it's not a... Yeah, because it's its own vessel, this sketchy stuff, um, it won't self-collide. Uh, how much power do we have with the electric charge, anyway? 75 hours at most. That does not seem like it's enough. Okay, we are going to... try these shenanigans. And yeah, the, the solar panel is on top here, because right now it's reading them as a unit and all four are facing the sun, so they are getting enough to recharge this. Yep, we will have to work on our solar panel game here. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. I didn't do science around the Earth. Whoops. <laughs> uh, too much thinking about this mess. Okay. And 
Ignition. Okay, and separation and ignition. Now we're gonna have to overburn from our intended apoapsis and periapsis because we're doing the inclination change. Any interesting signs? Oh, high above the north pole of the moon is new. Oh, might as well. Um, why did it do it? Oh, because each of the probes has one, right? Yeah, we don't need that. Alright, so we did science day from space around the moon. High over the moon has biome specificity. You can get a lot of moon science like that. Makes up for not having Minmus, I suppose. We're off by one degree. We just need to... Well, we are a little bit high there. Now, of course, I didn't really need to carry the three CubeSats. We could just fulfill each one of the contracts in turn with a single satellite. And just go one from, from one to the other. And that would have been lighter, but... I felt like actually putting satellites up, so... Okay, we fulfilled that one contract. I don't think we're gonna be able to do that particular full orbit around the Earth, because that's gonna take like 3,000 to get all the way back down. Yeah. So, let's try for the other moon one. Thinking about it, that it's not doable. I mean, the science data from space around Earth is probably doable. But I think 1,600, considering our orbital velocity is only 400, we can do it. But we need to plop off one of these. The safest one to plop off is the center one. So let me retract the solar panels here. Going to decouple. Woo! And this needs to extend solar panels. And it has no orientation control, I forgot about that. It doesn't have the little nitrogen RCS, nor a reaction wheel. Hmm, I put too many batteries. <laughs> okay, we might want to reassess what we're putting into these CubeSats. I put batteries instead of reaction wheel or RCS. But okay, now we're lighter and we have a little bit more delta V. We are going the wrong way. Okay, that looks like a good start on the apoapsis matching and our inclination, of course. So, 12 hours till that. And now can the bus go sun right and make that work out for us? Or is there still not enough power with the two solar panels like that? Each of the CubeSats had its own draw. Well, that's 0, 0.0 right there. Okay, there we're recharging, actually. This one is 64, that one is 56. Okay, so that's good. Relative rotation, sun. Okay, ignition. Once we drop off another one, it's gotta be a little bit hard to handle when we've just got one cube set. Well, we'll just go to Apoapsis and boost up. It accepted that. And... Yeah, yeah, it's accepted that. It says we've maintained stability. Oh no, it's this one. <laughs> so many things here. Okay, three contracts done so far. Can we get science data from space around Earth now? That is a tough question because once I plop off this satellite... Ooh, well that'll happen. That, that satellite... Can't switch vessels while under acceleration? Who said? Okay, kill rotation. Did that- that- that Separatron had a lot of juice to it. It's already one kilometer away. Well, this is oriented wrong. <laughs> and now I can't go back. Now can we go back to Earth? Is the question. We can sort of dispose of this, or just keep it outside Earth's atmosphere. Have it like that, and eventually probably get swung off into you know, planetary space or something, or maybe into Earth's atmosphere again. We need 621 meters per second 
if it can do that. And it's gonna have to hold itself even though it's sort of imbalanced. And that's in three days. I don't have anything pressing, we're just sort of killing time until we get the technology done. Oh, oh, power, power, power. Ooh, just in time. Well, now we can extend these two. These are pretty powerful hydrazine thrusters. I mean, each of these is 40 newtons. And that's just a 100 newton engine. So it's not impossible that the RCS is going to be able to hold this while doing the burn. And we packed more hydrazine than I had on the lunar lander, 10 times more. So. There is hope, but definitely no guarantees. Oh, they're not doing very much actually. Look at that yaw. I don't think the CubeSat's that heavy. But as we lose propellant, it's gonna get worse and worse. We have Lunar Escape. Okay, that's... oh, that's in the atmosphere actually. Well, now that's out of the atmosphere, but every time we turn it's gonna be sensitive. Let's give ourselves some more room. There we go. Alright, and sun down again. So we can go back, we just can't get into the particular orbit that the contract wanted around Earth because that's going to be too tight. We'd need 3000 meters per second for that or the ability to air brake. So those are not options. Let's go back and see if we can do the science though. I don't even think we've done science high over Earth, have we? It says around Earth. High over Earth is still around Earth. Let's see. Yep, high over the tropics. It's even biome dependent for the gravity scan. Temperature? We haven't even done temperature. Four contracts on one mission. Not quite as many as I was intending on doing, but still. Alright, well I'll leave it be. I think we're done with this. I'll leave it as is, even though it's a little bit awkward looking. Sort of like got a, it's like a probe with a hand out, and some something in its hand or something. Anyway, uh, you have to have some sort of imagination to see that. But anyway, we will leave that be, and next time we'll have to see. Uh, I'll wait until we unlock some stuff. But I actually think what we really need is interplanetary comms. It might be that. These are already OP and enough to go to the uh, to Venus or Mars, but I think the next step is just Venus or Mars, right? Or crewed launches. We are unlocking. Well, eventually we'll unlock enhanced survivability and get the Mark One pod, so we could get there. But I think at the start I'm gonna be doing a lot of time warping next time just to get the technologies done and probably distribution of upgrade points. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.